Hi. Hey. Kazumi. Gecko. How are you? I'm really good. I feel like this is just the way I'm supposed to be. How does it feel being a gecko? It feels right. Good. Do you, how does it feel being a gecko? You've been geckoing harder than me. Um, it's weird. I think uh, I, I've gotten very like used to it by now. Yeah. So I kind of, um, a lot of the like magic of being a gecko feels lost to me. Do you me. feel like people treat you differently as a gecko? Um, like you're nicer. Sometimes. Sometimes I'll be like walking in the suit and people will just start like filming me. And I'll well, start yeah, to get I- a little upset. But then I'm like, well, I, I'm, I kind of am inherently, um, you know, attracting attention by, by doing this. That's me when I like take like 10 dicks in the butt. I'm just like, yeah. What's been the most persistent thought on your mind lately? I think the most persistent thought in my mind lately is that I'm really busy and I wish there was five of me. Mm. And I wish I could make sure everyone was happy. Mm. <laughs> Why do you feel like you you can't make everyone happy? I feel like there's a, it's like Superman. Like Superman, Superman's biggest weakness is that he can't save everyone. Right. There, there's so many issues happening in the world and he's only one guy. And he might be a super guy, but mm-hmm. he can only be one guy doing one thing at a time. Mm-hmm. So it's like you could save Lois Lane, but what if a bunch of kids fucking die? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, it sucks. Mm-hmm. So it's like I want to do so many things but there's only one of me has that been a recurring thing throughout your life you wanting to do more than you have the physical ability to do i think i would say mostly right now because i'm catching the momentum of kazumi sure so right now i feel like you know every time i say no to a project every time i say yes to a project i'm saying no to like 10 other projects and Mm -hmm. i'm just like oh i hope being a gecko was worth it Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. but honestly wherever i am is where i'm supposed to be yeah there is something to that about just like saying yes to a thing and committing to it and like just being there with all of your like yeah you know senses and whatnot yeah being present has been i guess the biggest struggle for mine but i feel like this year i'm really conquering it like i'm all the way here yeah. i'm all the way geck yeah I'm geck the frick out do you uh for those who might not know who you are do you want to explain you were mentioning the momentum of kazumi yeah do you want to explain what that is i, I would say i'm most known for being a porn star do we say you can say you can say porn, can say porn yeah star. you can say porn I, star I sex on the internet okay you know? yeah and i but i would say like i'm also known for making a bunch of weird memes and just being a weird guy on online mm-hmm. um and just kind of being in the forefront of a lot of social entertainment right now mm-hmm, mm-hmm. how did you get started uh being kazumi um Kazumi was a person that I would become when I wanted to be cool. Yeah. Like I would go to sex parties and I would get fucked by a bunch of guys and my name would be Kazumi, not my real name. Mm. You know, I that Kazumi is still a part and reflection of who I actually am, mm-hmm. but she is now like a caricature for for profit, you mm. know. What, so with the name Kazumi was that given to you or did you come up with that? It's just a horny ass name. It, okay. th- like you read it, you know, I'm Asian, it's easy to sell, sure. etc. Do you feel a like uh, a strong distinction between Kazumi as a um as a character, as a persona and just you as yourself? Um no, I would say nowadays that's just that's a part of me just like everything else. Yeah. Like I hate when people are like, "Oh, sorry, that wasn't me." When they like just act crazy. It's right. like that was you. All right. of this is a part of you. Like there's right. there's no segment like I feel like the the true breakthrough of Kazumi is realizing that I am learning to become brave enough to love all the things that people say I shouldn't. Hmm. And how tell me about that journey to that. How did you overcome this uh all these people telling you that you shouldn't love these things it's it's none of my business what you think about me right you know it's it's none of my business what you think about me and honestly you're entitled to your opinion and you're probably right but Mm -hmm. if those things are important to you that's that's the bed you lay in you know and the choices you make are going to be the choices you make that keep you comfortable and help you survive in whatever Mm -hmm. world you live in i am happy with where i am and i don't have to validate that joy to other people right right are you happy with being a geck sometimes sometimes it's um i think when i I, it's the only thing that ever prevents me from being happy with it is my a lack of perspective on my behalf because i mean it's a crazy thing to dress up as a gecko do you think you'd be just as popular if you were human no i don't think i would be as popular as you think they love the gecko and not lyle i think that people click on this and they 
get like their attention is grabbed by mm-hmm. the gecko and then i think it's capped by like you know the the kind of stories and the atmosphere and everything. yeah no your concept is awesome thanks man yeah dude. W- this um thing of of wanting to be everywhere it's hard like you have like there's a thing and i'm trying to get better at this of like just ex- just like being okay with pe- make people being upset at you yeah you know you just have to be okay with it yeah like i'm throwing a birthday party in two weeks and i have to say no to a lot of people right and it's crazy because it's my day dude right. it's my birthday party and if i don't want certain things like why do i have to explain that it's my freaking birthday i have to learn how to say no to people yeah and sometimes i'll say i'll tell people like hey i don't want to do this yeah like have a plus one mm. and people will still ask and it's like you're asking because you know i'll say yes and it's annoying mm. that you don't respect me do like pe- that. so do people know that or have like a hunch that you're a people pleaser or that like you know i wouldn't say they think i'm a people pleaser but i think they know i'm an entertainer like i'll save face you know i'm diplomatic and i'm not confrontational you know if i there is an issue i'll probably wait until i'm actually it's a real issue before i confront you so there's you could get away away with a lot with me before i'm like dude yeah. not cool yeah 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 i feel like um i don't know it's it's hard to like build that skill of just saying no do you ever i try to like i'll say sometimes i'll say maybe when i mean no yeah but but i don't want to i don't want to but i don't want to lie i don't want to lie no dude just say no because it, it's like the word try I don't yeah. say try because if i say try i'm leaving room to fail and if i leave room to fail i didn't want to do it you know who said that Another great green character. Uh, Shrek. Shrek. Oh my god! Hey. I love Shrek! Hey, do you want to take a call? Yeah, let's take a fucking call. <laughs> Hello? Oh, Hi. no way. Hi, Jackson. Oh, this is... <laughs> I'm so excited, man. Hey, guys. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm really excited oh. to talk to you. You're uh, taking my Lyle virginity right now. Yeah. I, Jackson, it says here that um, you have oh, an irrational gosh. fear of <laughs> holding babies. I agree with that. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what I said. Um, there, yeah, sorry. Hold on. I'm, I'm really he's holding a baby right excited now. right now. Let me kind of compose myself. Sure. Tell us why you have a fear of holding babies. Yeah, so... <laughs> Um, I guess <laughs> my train of thought, I, I have a bunch of cousins right now who are my age, um, who are having babies, they're married and having children and they're, they're newborns. Like they were just born a couple months ago. And, um, I just, w- what happens is uh, as these new mothers, especially cousins that I've been hanging out with for a really long time they really they they offer me and like the rest of my family when we come and visit they offer to for me to hold the baby that's and scary. It's a lot yeah, of scary. honestly that's i i i just i mean i i can kind of understand it they want to share i mean this is a new member of my family and they're adorable and i don't hate babies <laughs> i just i, I think I, 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 I would love to enjoy it from afar if that makes sense just so kind of this, I feel like this watch. kind of ties into what we were just <laughs> talking about, right? Do you have a fear of saying no when people ask to hold the baby? Um, are you are you asking me? I'm asking you. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I sometimes I'll say no, and sometimes I'll say yes. It like it really depends on how insistent or. Um, really, I, I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes I really don't want to hurt someone's feelings. I, sometimes I feel you like know, they just take it personally when I'm like, no, I, is, I just don't want to hold your baby. There's an evolutionary study that says that, you know, back that the reason why we like hug and squeeze things that are cute is because way back in the day, we would see those things as a fret. We would see a cute little furry animal and we would want to hold it tight like so tight it explodes mm. because we want to get rid of it yeah. do you feel do you feel like when you hold a baby I, you just want to squeeze it so hard it explodes so that way you are the cutest well, it, it's not part of the family 
I mean, it's not quite that because I know that feeling that you're talking about. I definitely felt that before more towards like <laughs> dogs or cats, just how you intensely wanna... cute they are, if that makes sense. But for the baby, I just I just get stressed out when I, I just I don't know. It's like my dark intrusive thoughts. <laughs> I know exactly. I, I just what don't want to be responsible if something happened. Like if, if I was in charge of the baby and. I got distracted mm -hmm. or I just wasn't paying attention and I accidentally did something. I don't want to be in charge of that. I will say this. If you take uh, uh, what Kazumi just said about the history of how people would squeeze babies in order to kill them and you told that to whoever is asking you to hold the baby, <laughs> they, would not. they might not let you hold the baby anymore, which would solve your problem. Problem solved. Yeah. There, but there's true. also like... <laughs> but I mean... There's also like... No, go ahead. Those intrusive thoughts mean that you just cherish the people around you because there's a study that, you know, like we've all had that thought where it's like we're driving down the highway and we just want to stir yeah. oh, and yeah. like drive or like if I'm holding my keys, I just want to throw it down the gutter yep. or like seeing you. I value our friendship so much. I fantasize about spitting in your face, mm -hmm. knowing that it would ruin everything. And mm -hmm. that intrusive thought is what keeps me grounded to this planet. Mm -hmm. You know, like it, ma it makes me realize like I'm human and I'm feeling all the things I want to feel. And I care about this baby. So do not let me hold it because mm -hmm. I'm afraid of what I'm capable of. <laughs> mm -hmm. How would you feel about telling yeah. that to the to, to these people that want you to hold their babies? Jackson. You know what? Um, well, are, are you saying telling people, just admitting that this is an intrusive thought I have? And is that what you're saying? Yes. No, no. What, like, what would, like, oh, look what would happen if you just told the truth about, and you were like, listen, I don't want to hold this baby because just for whatever reason, whenever I'm holding your baby, I am also thinking about dropping it and crushing it and then potentially eating it afterwards. I definitely wouldn't let you hold my baby that way. And that way I you won't have to deal with the problem I don't want to <laughs> say it. I don't want to be that blunt about it. I, <laughs> I, then you could just drop the baby. I don't think I'm some sort of psycho. If you drop the baby no, once, I can't you kind of never either. have to hold a baby again. That's a legitimate point. <laughs> That's true. If you do one, you never That's have to do it ever good. again. Yeah. Maybe try oh, it with like also, a, a baby puppy. That also costs like three thousand dollars, probably, and maybe jail what? time. Wait, I it don't costs three thousand dollars <laughs> to drop a fucking baby. Can I ask where you got that number from, Jackson? <laughs> I would. I mean, medical bills. If I like, you're kill researching. A baby. Oh, okay. What do you mean? Oh, I thought like you meant if I go on the dark web and I ask like for a hit on a baby, it would cost three thousand dollars. That's that's where my twisted fucking brain went. I was that, like, oh, it's only three k. That's three thousand uh, dollars. I mean, to kill a baby's pretty good rate. It's pretty low for a hit. Yeah. I no, mean, that's really abortions low. Abortions are six hundred dollars. Think... Abortions are only six hundred dollars. Abortions are six hundred dollars without insurance. So really? Oh, you know what? I didn't yeah. think about it like that. Yeah, I mean, you could save a lot of money by just having your family abort. Jackson, is there anything else you wanted to say to the people at the computer That's before we go? That's still $600. Um, <laughs> someone, uh, yes, I, I did smoke a little bit before I got on the podcast, so I was Nobody nervous, knew, but I'm Jackson. really glad okay. I got to talk to you, Lyle. <laughs> Look, Jackson, um, no one can tell when you're high, I, but everyone can tell when you're insecure. I like that. Oh, you know what? I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that to heart for sure. <laughs> hey, thank you for I'm calling, really Jackson. I'm glad I got to talk to both of you. Kazumi, I'm I'm I take pride in as words taking your gecko identity. I will I will wear that as a badge. Oh my god, hell yeah. Take care, Jackson. <laughs> Have a good night, guys. I I like your idea of um basically taking you uh your intrusive thoughts and like really you because you don't want to examine them, right? Yeah. You don't want to you examine to the them. fact but if you face them and you were all, like, what if you were honest about that? But you told your aunt, listen, I just have this thing and I'm not in control of it, but it's telling me to drop your baby. And you're just yeah. honest. Like, you're not a bad guy for the thoughts Don't, that come into like, your head. You're a bad guy if I tell you that and then I, you make me hold your baby. Exactly. Like, you knew I was about to drop your fucking baby. Exactly. And that's and on them if they give you is. the baby and drop Whenever it. Whenever I, I meet someone and I think they're really cool, like when I meet you, I always imagine just freaking curb stomping them. Mm. Because I know that you wouldn't forgive me after. Mm. And that fear makes me just act right. Mm. Like, I'm just like, I just can't do that mm -hmm. that would be fucked up our brains want to sabotage yeah. things for no just because they're sadistic I, I think wherever fear is there there is your task and mm. once you face fear you will learn so much more about yourself mm. and you know you have to battle those intrusive thoughts i like that yeah <laughs>
Um, I wish I could die for the attention. Do you think you'd get a lot of attention? Oh from hell that? yeah! When you were um, in school, did you ever imagine your own funeral and imagine how sad people would I be? I committed suicide on Instagram, like in high school. Really? Like I like, like wrote a fake like suicide? I wrote like a, a like a suicide letter on Instagram and just logged off for like a week. Really? Just to leave the comments. Really? Just to, well, yeah, because people were being mean, and then they stopped. They um. I think when I didn't die, they were kind of like, dude. Were they? Yeah, they must have been, like, I mean, it's that's because you go from everyone is like remember so you, sad. and then they're fucking pissed. Yeah, yeah, that was not L move, not not like the best thing I did. Okay, but I like the attention. I wish I, but that's did you what recover I'm, from that? I feel like people would just be. I transferred schools. <laughs> 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 I did. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Is this Hi. Chelsea? This is Chelsea, yeah. Hi. Um, Chelsea, Hi. what's going on? How can we get you today? What did you call in to want to talk about? I wanted to share a story about when I had a foursome on a playground when I was 16. <laughs> oh, was everyone else also 16 or were they like a darker, mysterious age? Oh, no, they were 16 okay. as well. Okay, okay. Um... Okay, sure. <laughs> um, why did you do that? Was I, I guess you didn't really have a house. Like, well, yeah, we didn't have a house, and it was me and my friend. So it was me and my best friend, and then two fuck boys from school. <laughs> and we really wanted to like smoke and drink alcohol. So we knew those boys had that. So we were like going to hang out with them at the playground to do that. That that seems like a normal 16-year-old experience. How was your high school experience? Um I um I didn't have sex for the first time until I was 18. I didn't either, but I did do anal, which doesn't count. When did you do anal? Like 17. Okay. Yeah. All right. But like that I was a woman of God. Were you really? Did you grow up religious? Yeah, I grew up religious, which is why I had the poop hole loophole. Oh. Mm-hmm. So, but I do wish if I could go back, you'll never, like, I wish I was sluttier. Really? Yeah. I wish I just had sex with people that respected me and just had more fun with it instead of thinking I needed to have a boyfriend. So, I mean, Chelsea, is this like, how do you feel about this memory? Like, what place does it have in your, is it a, like, is it a, Something you remember fondly? Is it something that you regret? How do you feel about this? Um, I mean, it's kind of funny now just because it's so crazy. Um, but I definitely regretted it after. Um, yeah, I it guess like they're... broke up my whole friend group. So, <laughs> really? Because I was going to ask if it brought you closer to your yeah. friend or not. Ooh, Why did no. create some beef? No. It was just really awkward. Like, it was a really awkward, weird night. Some weird shit happened. <laughs> were you guys... Was it a good experience? Uh, like, as a whole? Like, were you, were you guys happy and, like, everyone felt good? Yeah, I mean, it was fun in the moment until uh, my friends, I guess I'll call her Stacy. she was, like, really fucked up and crossed. And oh, crossfaded. just, like, freaked out. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And like well, ran. <laughs> she like ran down a tunnel but ass naked. <laughs> she ran down a tunnel? Yeah, that's a typical like a tunnel that went to the other side of the playground. Every high school experience does have that one tunnel moment. <laughs> it has that one running through a tunnel naked after a foursome <laughs> moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Because I mean, you, you have. Um, you have I have friends in the in the porn industry, right? Yeah. When you have sex with your friends, has it brought you closer together to them? Yeah, I used to throw before I even did porn, I actually like threw my own sex parties like every Friday and it was mm. just like my own friend group and we would all just have like one big like family orgy. Family was a weird word, but mm-hmm. like wincess. Win what's wincess mean? Um like what like W incess? W incest? Oh, like it's a win. Sorry, that was an L joke. I will take that joke back. Um, 
what are your le- what are the lessons you learned about your foursome um playground experience that's a good question i was wondering that <laughs> Uh, definitely never have a foursome on a playground because we found out have that a foursome it had camera. On a bed. So, mm. yeah, maybe a bed would have been different. Maybe when you're not 16 and you're actually an adult. Mm-hmm. Um, and probably don't have foursomes with your friends. Well, well, who would you have foursomes with? Your enemies? Maybe. I feel like that would be easier. For mm. for what like so you fall in love with your enemy or like what's the, what's the vibe here? <laughs> no, I just like you don't ever have to talk to them again. That's fast. That's I, a fascinating. I guess. Take. That would be the vibe. Although I don't think that's true. I think that enemies. I think that you're talking about people that you're indifferent towards. I feel like enemies are present in your life. Yeah, like enemies are people I see every day, and I'm like. Fuck you, Andrew Tate. Like, that's my enemy. Chelsea, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, I just want to say I really love you, Lyle. And oh, thank thanks, you so man. much for taking my call. Oh, of course. Have a good rest of the night, Chelsea. All right. Thank you, you too. Bye. I love you, Chelsea. Oh, I'm sorry she didn't say I love you. Kazumi. Kazumi, how do you feel about the vibe of just as we are in this moment, taking phone calls and talking to people? I love people. People mm-hmm. are the best books. They are. People are the best books. That's my favorite line. Yeah. You know, Where's that? I, What's that from? That's just from um, a guy on Tinder. He once <laughs> told me that. And I, re- and I really steal that line and say it everywhere to sound just as deep as that guy. Was that his line or did he take he it from He said someone? that. But that's because, honestly, I'm a pretty great book to read. So he was like, people are the best books, man. What's your favorite chapter of your book? My current chapter right now is literally right now. Right here, really? sitting on this chair next to Lyle, the gecko. That's very sweet. I appreciate that. Yeah. Next time, you'll wear the bikini and I'll, I'll be the full gecko. Oh, I'm sure they would love that. No, I'm sure they would really like that. Now, that's what will get us banned. So, yeah. <laughs> Hello? Oh, son of a gun. Hey, guys. Hey, Hi, Tristan. Tristan. What's up? Oh, hey, guys. Yeah, I was not expecting to get picked. Sorry about that. Give me just a sec here. Oh, my God. <laughs> Tristan? Yes? Hi. Yes, I'm here. Hey, What's how going you going? On? How, can, how, can we, how can we get you today? Well, you know, man, I've been having some issues uh, that I've just kind of been thinking about recently. Uh, they've kind of persisted about my whole life, but I've always had an issue with my name. And I just... Tristan? Uh, I don't know. I'm, it's like yeah, I don't like it. It's a cooler Christian. It's like a sexier version of Christian. Mm. What's wrong with it? I always get called Christian anyway. You know, and I've you- never been able to pinpoint what's wrong. I, I've just never associated uh, that name with me, to be honest. Mm. You know, life is too short Does for one sense? name. In in middle in elementary school, actually, every day I would sign my paper with a different name, and my teacher hated it. But it was just like one day I felt like a ruby, and then the other day I felt like a crystal, and the other day I just felt like a, a Lyle, the gecko. Mm, you know, mm. you're allowed to change. Like also, Tristan sounds like three Christians. So just- so to <laughs> that to that point, Tristan, I want to know. If you feel like the name Tristan doesn't suit you so well, do you have in mind like a a different name that might be better? Well, recently, uh, I've kind of been stuck on the name uh, either Sunny or Sunshine. Sunny for short. I like Uh, that. I know it sounds pretty hippie-ish, but I'm not too much of a hippie. I just feel like it really reflects uh, the kind of mark I like to leave on people. Do you know the story of Lancelot? Let me tell you. There was this kid in my junior high school. He was Chinese. (laughs) And everyone made fun of his name because they were racist and awful. Until one day they were like, hey, just today we'll let you choose your name. And he chose Lancelot. And we were like, really? Are you sure? Are you really sure you want to be named Lancelot instead of like your freaking Chinese name? And he was like, okay, never mind. I want to be named Muhammad. And that was the rest of his name. That was that was his name until I stopped knowing him. Muhammad. He changed his name from a Chinese name to an Islamic name? 
It, it, well, it was Lancelot for five minutes, and then it was Muhammad. Why did, did he say why he picked Muhammad? I don't know. I mean, 9-11 already happened. I don't know if that was like a thing that he was mentioning. Okay. Wait, no, Osama bin Laden did 9-11. I'm just Osama bin Laden did how long after, eh? Yeah, Muhammad is just the most common name in the world. Muhammad is it, it is the most common name in the world, and it it's is. also the name of the fighter, Muhammad Ali. Yeah, so we named it, we called him Muhammad. But so yeah, actually, you could be Sunny. Yeah, it's actually... Yeah, I, I do like Sunny. Uh, I really haven't put it into practice much. To be honest, it's been something I've been thinking about pretty recently uh, when it came to deciding on a name. Uh, I've always had an issue with it. My biggest hang-up, though, comes with my, my parents. Uh... It's uh, I don't know. They're fickle. They don't they mm. don't like the things that they've done to be messed with. I guess. Mm. They don't. They, uh, I didn't know my dad would certainly have an issue with. I haven't talked to him. Mm. Well, it's actually funny that you mentioned the story about your friend Lancelot because that's actually where my Muhammad. name derives from as well. Is a lesser known. Right. Sorry. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> it's a lesser known knight of the Round Table. I think his name was Tristan or something like that. It would start it with an M. Uh, but oh. that's where my dad came up with the idea of the name. Um, I just, I don't know. It's never really suited me, I think. Now, uh, but my, yeah, my why are you avoiding, is, can I ask why you're avoiding uh, trying to tell your parents about uh, this new name? I, th I think we've had this conversation before when I was oh, um, wow. a teenager. I didn't like my name. I brought it up. I brought it up with them. Uh, I, I, my, my memory's pretty foggy, but I do remember them having a negative uh, reaction to that. But that was uh, granted years ago. I'm 25 now. I think porn stars and rappers have this cool ability where they could just have the most ridiculous name, like like Sea Biscuit, and people just are like, "Okay, you're from yeah, the streets." I, fuck with that. I guess. Yeah, you could be Sunny. And, and and I'll just call you that from now on. And eventually you will bend your parents' will once everyone else calls you Sunny and no one knows who Tristan is. <laughs> True, yeah. yeah. When they're the last remaining people still calling you Tristan, they're going to have to adapt. Yeah. I could be like, that's my dead name. I don't know who the fuck Tristan is. Yeah, I guess so. I... <laughs> Thanks for the insight. Oh, for sure. Do you want us to? Do you want us to? Can we? Should we be the first people to call you Sonny? Does anyone else call you Sonny? Uh, no. Um, sure. Go ahead. I love you, Sonny. Hey, thanks for calling, Sonny. Anything else you want to say to the people <laughs> before we go? No, thank you. I love you too, Kazumi. Even though I haven't seen any of your stuff, sorry. You should Google it. Google it, <laughs> Tristan. You have a whole night ahead right, of you. Yeah. You're sunny to me. Take care, ma'am. You know, there's this amazing book by Jerry Spinelli called Star Girl. And it's about a girl and she keeps moving across t like to new schools all the time. And people think she's weird and she goes by Star Girl. Mm. And everyone's like, that's not your fucking name, dude. Mm. And for some reason, everyone's so mad. But she's like, no, my name is Star Girl and that's just the way I want to be called. And every time she moves to a new place, she's Star Girl. And like all these people want to make fun of her, but she's just being truly herself. It's mm. honestly a great book on like, who fucking cares? How did you, uh, when you started telling, you started going by Kazumi how long ago? I would say like three-ish years. Okay. And do like your parents, do they call you Kazumi or they just call My you? My parents don't know what I do. Really? No, it's kind of like a little spaghetti surprise. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I'll like present it to them in like a PowerPoint presentation one day. What do, would you know what, what do they think you do? I think they think I'm a loser. I mean, I guess they're not wrong. I guess to many I am a loser, um, but I don't think they think I have an income. I think they think I just fuck around and be like a hot girl. Mm -hmm. What do you believe makes somebody a loser? Um, well, to them, I am a college dropout and okay. I don't know how to drive. Okay. Um, I have sex for money. Okay. It's kind of a loser vibe if okay. you're like not cool, okay. you know. Okay. Um, I don't know. But that's like their opinion of what a loser in, is. In, in your own eyes, what makes in, somebody a loser? In my own eyes, what is a loser? Yeah. A loser is is a hater. Is a hater. Yeah, okay. it's a fucking hater, bro. Yeah. It's like it's like all that energy you have to be negative could have been fulfilled in a way that could have made you happy. Yeah. But you choose to be a hater. That's a loser vibe. What kinds of things are making you happy these days? Um, I love it a good omakase. 
what is an amakase? It's like a course dinner, usually Japanese. So like it'll be like seven courses of like Japanese nigiri and izakayas. Okay. That makes me overjoyed. Sure. Um, I like people. People are the best books. I like taking these calls. I like being a gecko. I like be. I like. I like having like weird side quests. I like just doing things because they fulfill me. Because right now I make enough money on OnlyFans to only say yes to what I want to do, mm. which is cool. Did you go on a date with the guy who gave you that quote? Who gave me what quote? Oh, the Tinder guy. That people are the best books. Yeah. Yes, we how did. did. How did the date go? So the date. First of all, I'm probably the most interesting woman in the world. The date was an auditory movie where we (laughs) went into a a room, a dark room. We were blindfolded and we only heard music. Like the movie was completely auditory. Like it was only sounds. Was it a 360? It was 360 like stereo thing. And we were for two and a half hours. We were, I guess like we were in like a, we were in our own separate trance. And then we talked about like what we did. Like how, how we like imagined this movie, and that was your idea to go to the. Yeah, it was my idea. It was a cool. What did, I feel like that's a good bonding experience. You each go into your own trance and kind of talk about it. Yeah, like what it did was, you learn from your trance? Um, people will always have their own interpretation. Like I imagined like an animated movie, and he imagined yeah. like some Die Hard Four shit, yeah. you know. And I feel like that told a lot about us. He was a cool dude. I think his name was Brian. I love how, you, how Brian. far did uh, how far did your relationship go with Brian? How many more times did you see him? I was always clear about not being monogamous yeah and at the time everyone respected that but people would tell me straight on i think you're really cool but long term i don't think ethical non-monogamy is for me so Mm. it would hurt me to know that you're with other people right now so i don't want to get too deep so we respectfully parted ways but we had a good time yeah yeah have you always been uh uh like ethically non-monogamous yeah i'm a slut but i'm a happy slut like Mm -hmm. i don't try to hurt people like Mm -hmm. i've never cheated and I've never went behind every, anyone's back. I want to give everyone the respect they deserve to have all the information and then decide how that makes them feel. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's, um, I, there's the thing. I feel like, uh, to really get to a point where you can, like, be in a relationship with someone and, like, be okay with them being uh, with other people, it's like a, it's like a interesting, like, ego test. Yeah. Like, for me, loyalty is not physical exclusivity. Loyalty sure. is, be letting you have your own experiences and do whatever you want to do yeah, yeah, and yeah. just letting you know that i'm here for you yeah you know like you know i feel like my partner sometimes he talks to girls and i think they're really weird but that's <laughs> they're, 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 i think they're the girls the, if your partner is ta- <laughs> talking to a girl and you think that she's weird will you tell him or will you be like you have to go figure that out i mean i'll just tell him like hey she's weird but i'll never tell you you can't do anything yeah sure honestly a real relationship is just you know is we understand that we don't want to hurt each other. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's people that are weird, but that doesn't make it a crime. It's not a crime. It's true. It's weird. not. Pe- people are too um, self-conscious about being weird and annoying and stuff. And I'm, it's not a crime. To I'm be pretty a little... weird and I'm pretty annoying. And I am training myself to see things I don't understand and yeah. not want to destroy it. Yeah. Yeah. That's why yeah. I watch That's a lot we live of in scat harmony. porn. Oh, oh. okay. Oh, you, we, uh, scat porn is included in the harmony that we live in. Yeah, sure. yeah. It's just like if you're happy about it, like I don't care. <laughs> if you're happy and it doesn't hurt anyone, then then eat shit, dude. Mm-hmm. For real. Learn to see things you don't understand and not want to destroy it. I think but that's a good. You thing don't have to. Look, you don't. Yeah. You don't have to watch scat porn. I'm just saying that as an example that I see it and I'm not. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. You know, the world would be a better place. I okay. Here's an example. I don't think Andrew Tate is a cool fucking guy, but I don't think he should like, like detonate. You know, I don't think he should explode. De- detonate. Like, I don't think someone should put a bomb in his ass. And oh, it, like make him explode. Sure, I don't think. You, I don't think it's of humans to decide who lives and who yeah, dies. Yeah, like I don't yeah. fucking like. I just would never deal. No, detonate like a bomb, not defecate. I mean, he can poop if he wants to. Yeah. Oh, I brought Lyle to my house and I made everyone watch porn together. Yeah, yeah. That was like it's eleven. Kind of fascinating. That was like eleven people subjected to watching my weird gooner porn. Uh, like for that was a nine minute and six second video. Yeah. yeah. I have this weird obsession with like, um, like how desensitized can I be to things? I don't. I think I still feel things when I see. Sometimes if I see it, the right image, I'm like, okay, I'm mm-hmm. still here, guys. I'm mm-hmm. still fucking here. 
Um, so like we, you put on like the pro that you called it gooner. Yeah. The gooners, porn? the gooner porn. What the, f- what is a gooner again? A How gooner, would you describe that? I wouldn't say porn addiction, but I would say they see porn as like consuming porn as like a hobby. Yeah. It's like a thing that you just do. You work out for an hour, you jack off for an hour. You know, some will say like <laughs> neoclassical gooners will say gooning is like eight hours of just jacking off. But like. I think the purpose of gooning is just seeing it as a hobby and a neutral part of your life and not as a thing that's just like, oh, fuck, this is destroying my mind. You were trying to explain gooning for a while and I still kind of had... It's just a, some, it's a, I mean, just an, the, a, a the, mega the, the porn visual, obsession. The visual is kind of crazy. I'm going to admit that the visual of like gooning is crazy. I actually... <laughs> it's called an addiction. <laughs> Somebody said neoclassical gooner. What is a neoclassical like gooner? Like a classical gooner. Like I once <laughs> went to... I once paid for a cuddle session. And it was like nine... It was like a, a giant group of people in one giant mattress. And there was neoclassical cuddlers who were like... There was spooning. There was holding each other. There's like the bear type c- cuddling. And those are the only type of valid cuddling positions. Whereas us new age cuddlers... Whatever the fuck feels good, man. So what is it like where they take liberties with cuddling positions and they can do like... Yeah, I think you could... Dude, like, like like somebody is sideways and you like grab... If, if, my, if my little tadpole like little foot was on your foot and yeah. we, saw, we seek comfort in that, we're cuddling, man. So there's an interpretation where like if you're touching somebody's arm, you're cuddling with them. I, I think it's intent. Okay, sure. It's the intent of like I just want I want to feel like safe. Hmm. Are we cuddling right now? Um, I or guess we if words contact? only have the meaning that you intend for them to have, then we're, sure. We're arguing semantics. We know when we're cuddling. Yeah, right. We know right, when we're right, cuddling. Right, right, right. We know when we're cuddling. Yeah, I like yeah. that. I like yeah, it's we, an interesting philosophy to yeah. apply in different places. Uh, like it's like we know we know when you have a porn addiction. When you don't when you stop feeling good about it. By the way, I have a caller who has a porn addiction. Oh, to yes! To us. Okay. Yay! Right, give me one second. Somebody asked where you can find Kazumi on Google. Kazumi'sWorld.com. But also, my Instagram is Kazumi's World. My OF is Kazumi's World. Um, if you want to see me getting railed by Prince Yashua in a pinned tweet, my Twitter is Kazumi's who World. Who is also, Prince Yashua? You don't know who to f- Art Prince Yashua is. He's like one of the most legendary porn stars ever. He always fucks in his Timberlands. I asked him to step on my head with his Timberlands. He wouldn't do it. What? Why not? Oh, uh, I don't know. He's done it to many. You know what's crazy is he told me that his dick was 11 inches, but then he wasn't? broke it. So now it's nine. Let's take a call. Hello? Hey. Hey, Lyle. Hey, Aaron, how you doing? I'm here with Kazumi. We're geckos. We're taking calls. He's from Salt Lake City, which is like the horniest town ever because there's so many Mormons. Is this true? It's funny you say that because, um, (laughs) like, they declared it like a public health crisis in the state. They're getting a lot of SCDs right now. Wait, people are having so much sex that they declared it a public health crisis? They are because you have to understand that the Mormons are... Their sexualities are very repressed. So once it's, they get married and then they get divorced so yeah, that they can they be freed from their disease. horny jail, they um they get chlamydia and gonorrhea a lot. And there's no like testing places like major cities like Los Angeles and Miami wow. where I can get tested. Like I got tested yesterday and I got my test results today. Mm. And they don't really have that in cities like Salt Lake City because like sexual education is like really faulty over there so they don't want you to get tested they don't want you to learn about scds so people are more prone to fucking up mm. is i this agree accurate that the sex from what your personal here, experience but... i'm sorry i'm talking over you <laughs> um i mean there's like good resources because i feel like i had sex with the girls the hookup and she got tested like right after and i was uh, i don't I was having a whole phase at the moment, and so I probably was the one to give her something. She kind of, like, texted me the very next day. It was like, hey, I got tested, and you should get tested, too. And I got a pill, like, within the hour. It was pretty crazy. That's good. I'm glad but that you have it was, like, cool that it was, like, that quick easy resources. for me to do. Um, so, Aaron, it says here that you, you yeah, are calling in because you want to talk about being a... Funded chronic masturbator and possible porn addict 
He will. What does it say? He will mass. Yeah, I don't know if it's like a mixture like six of times a day. Tell us about it in your own words, Aaron. <laughs> um, I mean that's kind of modest because I mean it's kind of embarrassing that I, so if I'm not careful, it can be up to like ten times a day, and that's when it's like, hey, to completion. I, this is not healthy. This is getting in the way of like my work and stuff. What? To completion. Um, yeah. Like but it's like <gasps> I don't know. Of- it's a lot of skeet, bro. It's a lot of skeet. You must be eating a lot yeah. of proteins and fibers. Do you feel good afterwards? Well, that's the thing is it's not as satisfying. Well, the more you do it, like, it's, you're not rock hard on the seventh time, you know? So so why are you doing that? Um, I don't, And that's just the thing is I can't, like, stop even if I wanted to. I've been trying and it's just... I, I I probably just need someone to help me, and I'm scared to like ask like friends and family because it's just embarrassing. Mm. Hmm, it's interesting. It sucks to have an addiction that may have started off as a fun hobby and now is taking away from your life and goals. Do you feel like you could like wean yourself off and maybe jack off five times a day instead of ten? Like we could start slow, or do you feel like it's better to cold <laughs> and that's turkey? The thing is you just take it one time and. And inches well, an inch. Because maybe I need to just start like supporting people on OnlyFans instead of like watching it for free online. And I feel like that's actually been helping is to like kind of normalize it instead of like something that uh, I have like access all the time. I have it like blocked for work. And you just kind of regulate it. You just, I don't know. You just everything regulation. I would say like substituting mainstream porn with only fans is like substituting cigarettes with vaping it's like <laughs> it's like that's better you know like at least at least it's not at least you're at least like pay like you are sustaining the economy and paying the local homegrown porn creator so i salute you thanks um <laughs> i gotta ask so aaron like is there a um is there like a uh, uh, anything under the covers of this? Like, are you masturbating to like avoid something or to fill a hole of some kind or to deal with some outside yeah. stressor? Well, what Definitely. is that? What is it? Um. Well, and I and that's probably something I need to speak to a sex therapist about. Is I'm thinking is just. Because it was just so taboo growing up because I, I was just, I was raised Mormon until I was out of high school. And I kind of had this like identity crisis afterward. There just wasn't anyone around. There's kind of no one around now. I kind of got away from my friend group like right before the pandemic. And I, I, I kind of want to keep it that way. They, they were just kind of like drinking buddies that we didn't have a lot of common with. But I, um, It looks like you, know, you might just, just need to find it's a... It's detrimental to be find a relationship. Yeah, and it might be detrimental to have a relationship when your addiction is constantly depleting you of your own sex drive. Have you like take do you well, do you want to take measures to be better or are you comfortable with your current situation? I'm just I'm just barely like starting to try to do better. Um, There's no trying I'm only doing. Older. It's like we can't keep on doing this. Well, I'm proud of you, Aaron of Salt Lake yeah, City. I hope you get a, a sex therapist. For a more healthy sex life. Do you have Do you have sex regularly, or is it just masturbation? You know, if I really put my mind to it, I could probably have sex with people. But I mean, I'm getting older, where it's like it's not that appealing to just like sleep around with people. Like, and I'm mm. like, didn't realize how many people I've like left with until like sat down and like counted on and it's still a lot it could be more if i really put my mind to it but i i don't know i'm getting to the point where i would like a family and all my other like siblings and cousins they all have like kids and it's sad for me yeah it, it doesn't have to be a lot of people and it also doesn't have to be a lot of porn it could be a little porn and it could be a few people but you <laughs> just have to make sure that you are respecting yourself and the people that you have sex with respect you like at the end of the night yeah okay are you feeling as can i ask you that are you when you are having sex are you feeling as though the people that you have sex with are respecting you and it's a positive 
uh, interaction? Yeah, usually there's some times, especially if like I don't know the person very well, where I'll, I'll just like start hyperventilating, and we have to like we kind of have to like talk in bed for a while, and I have to get to know the person before I can finally like you know calm down. It's just kind mm. of like this anxiety that comes over me. It's really weird. Do you feel like porn has kind of like troubled your expectations of what sex is like with with people? I feel like it's desensitized me but i can't i think porn is like super cool I, f I feel like it's cool to like appreciate sex workers in you know the female form i would say obviously as someone who makes porn i obviously have a biased opinion about yeah we are awesome but i will say that anything <laughs> out like exceeding moderation can be bad for you you know course, like yeah. let's say like if you were just constantly like dedicating your life to only watching twitch streams like obsessively and yeah, yeah you probably should focus on getting a job or right. like just finding something that makes you happy and fulfilled that's outside of consuming other people's stuff whether it's sexual or not and i'm someone that is surrounded by sex all the time and i wouldn't say i'm desensitized to it hmm. i would i would say as long as the context involves me or like if someone is trying to turn me on then it's always horny to me you know obviously I see boobs and I'm like, cool. It does. It's not always exciting, but that's because I just see it as a person and, and it's a normal thing. Like it's just a part of a body. And also like if people are having sex in front of me, that's just a bot. Those are just people doing a natural right. thing. If they involve me in it, then yeah, now I'm stimulated. Now I'm horny, but I, I would, I wouldn't say replace your addiction with another addiction, but I would like, I would urge you to find a hobby where you feel fulfilled and hobbies like that could include creating a skill set yeah. or like learning <laughs> how to become better at porn things. is and my those... hobby that's the problem <laughs> mm. do you have a problem with that you're not wrong though that's exactly what i need to do no i just need to find a an interest that i can share with others you know more openly you could, i think <laughs> you could have a goonette that's a girl gooner. No, it's real. It's well, that's, real. You're, that's, okay, so that is a fascinating thing you bring. Okay, so I'll say this. There's a guy who called in um, a few podcasts ago who talked about how he had like 80,000 images of hentai porn <laughs> on his computer. Give him my number. Well, okay, so I was going <laughs> to so here's why I told him. I was like, okay, I, so, I don't know. I'm not, but I sort of feel like we'll fucking find... There's women out there who are also into hentai porn. Yeah. Go find someone to go find, a, as you say, a goonette, uh, yeah, somebody sure, who is, just in, you know, into as into porn thing. as you are. I will say that people, I think, are afraid of sex because they're afraid of looking into the mirror. Mm. They're, they're afraid of finding something out about themselves that they feel like will make them unlovable or dirty or wrong because we have because we, we have such a weird relationship with sex especially in america and especially with religion because you're an ex-mormon and i think at the root of it all you have to analyze why you feel that way about sex and how you can have a healthier relationship so that way you can continue consuming it in a way where you feel good and are also able to establish real relationships with people in real life how do you feel about that aaron yeah, this has been very therapeutic, just getting it off my chest like that. I For hope other people that are struggling can, you know, turn it around. Can I ask you one thing, Aaron? So when we're, when we're talking about kind of trying to build a more well-rounded thing, do you have in your mind, like, a hobby or something that you would like to pursue outside of pornography? Um, you know, I keep telling myself if I could just go to the gym a couple times a week, I'd probably have less energy or, you know, like motivation to jack off and go to sleep. Were there, yeah, there's no cons to working out. No. I none. feel like when I feel like working out makes me more horny. Yeah. Don't tell him that though. But I think like it'll make you more confident. <laughs> right. It'll it'll make it'll put you out there. You're learning. You're like you're like working towards I towards a go goal, even if that. it's not this is true. You can do that. I would I would urge you to to ask yourself better questions, and you'll have better answers. Uh, Aaron, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer, or to me, or just... to Kazumi, or to God before we go? No, that's it. You just gotta you start today. You don't have to you know be different tomorrow. You just gotta choose to start today. Don't wait till then. 
Yeah, the, the best time to change was yesterday, but the second best time is now. Hey, thanks for calling, Aaron. Yesterday you said tomorrow, just do it. Make your dreams come true. <laughs> do you think he subscribed to my OnlyFans? Um, I hope so. If you have a porn addiction and I'm not involved in there, <laughs> like you, you don't have a porn addiction yet. <laughs> um, that was interesting. Do you... Um, What's your personal take on porn addiction? Porn so addiction. Nice porn. I'm going to erase the word porn out of it so that way it doesn't seem like obviously I do porn. Sure. I think any addiction isn't... When I classify an addiction, I'm assuming it's taking away... It's no longer giving you joy. Uh-huh. It's taking you away from your goals and ambitions and time from whatever. But I also have... I don't know. It's weird because at the end of the day, it's like, whatever, man. It's like, it's about, it's at the end of the day, it's about how you feel. Because when I go to Europe, there is so much of a, I'm probably sounding so ignorant because I'm just, I'm just in like weirder spaces in Europe. But when I'm in Europe, there's such a better, um, relationship with these uh, things, relationship with drugs. Sure. So, like, if I go to Berlin, people are on ketamine, people are on Xanax, people are just fucking partying, doing yeah. drugs casually. But because there's a better educational system and a better support system for yeah. people who do drugs, there's less addicts, mm. right? So when we destigmatize sex, it's no longer an addiction because it doesn't really make you feel bad. Yeah, well, that's the thing is it's, it's know? kind of subjective to like where – because like, if you jack off – because there are probably lots of people – who jack off more than Aaron does and are like, I feel great every day. I'm hanging out. I yeah, have a good life, I guess you know. there's high functioning addicts. Like, I guess you could yeah. do meth and also be the CEO it's, of a company. It's hard with it's hard with the, like you. I like you know addictions of any kind where it's like, is it is it in the eye of the beholder or is there yeah. an objective standard to that? Would you say like for example like let's say maybe this whole time I've secretly had a meth addiction. But yeah. is it an addiction if I'm able to be, in your eyes, a successful person and makes a lot of money and seems to be outwardly happy and I'm happy with myself currently? Well, like, I don't know. It, I guess it, if, your bo- like, if your body is physically addicted, then it probably is an addiction. Yeah, like, I feel like once I'm starting to harm myself. But then again, like we smoke and we drink, smoke and drink and we do things that technically harm ourselves all the time. Like I ate like a fuck ton of like, a, like three cr- crunchy rolls. That was. Yeah. Do I have a crunchy roll addiction? Like, but I'm a high functioning crunchy roll addict. What's a crunchy roll? No, just a crunchy roll, like a tempura roll. Oh. I, was, I ate, I ordered too much sushi. Okay. I thought you wanted some. I have a, I, but do you have, <laughs> do you have sushi? No, I oh. ate it all because oh, you didn't okay. want any. Well, no, I'm glad you ate it all. <laughs> um, I like, uh, I'm, I, yeah, I have, I mean, I have like food addictions and, but the, and those are clearly, but like, are they those don't addictions? make me, yeah. Those are just things yes. that you're into. No, that's an addiction. But I feel like when we ca- imagine addictions, it's like you just can't stop eating it. Oh, you yeah. can't stop. Like, like you'd be eating it right now, but you're not because you know you have stuff to do. What do you think? Do you know what I'm going to do after this? I'm going to eat But a like lot. you're at work right now or sure. you're, you're, you're at something right now. So you're able to decide, hey, I shouldn't be doing that. Right. It's not interfering with my like I'm not yeah. stoned right now. When I'm people not say right like, now, hey, but... do you have a sex addiction? I'm always like, I mean, I'm at work. And then I have sex. And then sometimes I have to do things that aren't about sex. Like, I'm not calling off this interview to have sex. Like, I would see sure. it say, once I start prioritizing, like, sex over, like, the shit I need to do, like, being a gecko. Right. And, like, like going to my mom's birthday party. Then right. maybe I have an addiction. Right, yeah. But maybe I just have a hobby and people tell me I should feel bad about it. It's a hard line. It's yeah. a hard line. But, yeah. I would say... He sounded like he, it was making him unhappy. It, yeah, if you're unhappy then you should just change, you know? And it's it's hard to say because people think it's hard to just change, but it, it's a point where you just decide. Shall we take another call? Let's go! Okay, I, I want to ask you, do you... Um, do you... What, do you want it? Because there's a lot of people who would like to talk about sex things. Would yeah. you want to talk about sex yeah, things? Yeah, I love talking okay, about cool, sex things. That's my hobby. Let's talk to Sky. Hi, Sky. Hi! How are you guys? Hey, I'm like in for a surprise because I can't read this prompt. So, like, tell me what you're here to talk about. Um. Okay. So I am here to ask some advice about my roommate and I. So this recently is my first semester at college, and I got paired with a random roommate. I don't really know anyone here, and 
Uh, ever since like the second week of school, my roommate kept bringing over new guys, and she like every single night she would bring over a new guy, and then she would ask me to come and join them. And it was just a little awkward at first, but it's like I'm I'm a little intrigued, but I don't know what to do about it, especially because I'm in a throuple right now, and so I have a boyfriend and a girlfriend. I was with my girlfriend first. We're going five years now. Um, but my boyfriend, he joined us about a year ago, and it's just it's it's a little different. I've been in polyamorous relationships before. So, are you in a closed thruple, or is this an open thruple where you're also able to explore other people outside of the two people you're seeing? So, this is an open thruple, but it's just I don't know if like my girlfriend would get mad because we only opened it whenever my boyfriend joined. So. Like I don't know if my girlfriend would get a little upset or if my boyfriend would about like me joining my roommate because I'm really curious to join them. But okay, so you want just, to join them? I don't know what them. to do, especially because she has so many cool things. Yes, I do, but it's just it's a hard decision, you know. Girl, go crazy! What the hell? You're living the life right now. When I was 19, which is what it looks when you're 18. When I was 19, I was um throwing. I had I was in like a polycule. Which is just basically like like it's like you're fucking the whole group chat like it was all it was like probably like t- like 10 12 of us and we were all just one big horny family and we all had sex with each other and we all got tested frequently and then sometimes we introduce new people to it i think the best thing you can do is have a conversation with all the people you're in a relationship with about wanting to explore it and then seeing where it goes okay that's that's so cool like how do i bring that up to them you know like how do i tell them because i don't know if like they're gonna get the impression that i don't trust them or if like they're just gonna be like oh she's a little off now i think people have this misconception that when you explore ethical non-monogamy that somehow it's easier because now apparently you're just able to fuck other people and really it's not the more people you involve the more conversations you need to have because you can't assume that people are just okay with things so if you really um, take your rela- your thruple seriously, I would have those conversations and really go over boundaries um, and what you feel like you're able to explore in your relationship. I also feel like as an 18-year-old, I don't know, you should be able to explore things. People are the best books. Wow, that's so cool. I mean, it's just, I don't know, sometimes I feel like that, like the people around me are going to like shame me, especially because if I go with my roommate every night, I just, I don't know, like, how to, how do I tell her that, like, I'm super interested, especially because, like, I'm looking into, like, some different kind of stuff, you know, and I, I know she is too, so it's, how do I tell them that kind of stuff, you know? You should read The Ethical Slut. It's a great book on polyamory and ethical non-monogamy, um, because you are, you should be allowed to explore your sexuality guilt-free without feeling any types of shame. This is your this is your time to really like decide what you like and what you don't like. And if there are people out there who would shame you about it or you don't feel comfortable sharing that with, then you shouldn't be with them. Although this is me going in with my with wow, my talk. I love that talk. advice. <laughs> <laughs> what are your opinions advice, on that, though. Lyle? Um. Hmm. So, uh, can I ask? There's. Because I feel like all this boils down to communicating, right? Yeah. Can I ask you, because I think a lot of the, is there a barrier to that? Is there like a fear of the communication? Are you asking me or her? Um, I'm asking her. Um, I mean, there's definitely like a fear. Like a fear of being shut down almost. Right, the fear of rejection. Well, how are you able to introduce yeah. a whole other boyfriend? It was Lucky. It was all my girlfriend. She put in a lot of the work. Oh, so that's her boyfriend too. She put. A, I don't know. I, I don't know how yeah. much work it so, takes to convince a guy to, to have, two have two girlfriends. We're expensive, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Would you have two girlfriends? Yeah, that's a lot of work. <laughs> Our periods can sync up. What mm-hmm. if? What if I like? I want to eat tacos. She wants to eat pizza. Get we'll tacos have, and pizza. We'll have to go to the Pizza Bell Taco Hut. Or pizza, t- yeah. <laughs> um, Sky, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go, or to Kazumi, or to be or to God? 
Um, I think that this was some amazing advice, and I really just wanted to thank y'all. And I will make sure to bring this up with my girlfriend and everyone around us too. Hell yeah! Thanks for calling, man. Thank you. Have a good night. I got to think of a better one than I keep. My fourth thing is always God, but I got to think of something better. Yeah, like that. I don't know, Hitler. I like the mic kiss thing that you do. It's like oh, you're, you're kissing, kissing the the, um, the, the uh... that was such an interesting story because I felt like the solution was so easy. I wonder what other possible advice she would have gotten about that. It's, it's very like... funny how many of the well. Okay, so here's the thing, and I'm gonna I... be completely like like ninety nine percent of all of the calls and situations that are like. There's to me there's two kinds of conflict. There's conflict you have with yourself and with the world, and then there's conflict that you have with other people. Mm-hmm. And almost a hundred percent of the time the answer to the conflict you have with other people is, is Did just, you ask? It's just is just talk to them. But the and I'm and I'm not trying to say this because I'm, you know the reason why people don't talk to you is because they're scared. Because mm-hmm. these having these conversations is scary. Talk, telling the truth to people yeah. is scary and sometimes you wonder whether or not you should do it. You know, and that and that's what all these kind of boil down I, to. I think when people are afraid to be themselves, it's just prolonging the inevitable. You have to let the people you're around you decide if they like you. You can't always have control. You have to show them the ugly parts, and if they're into it, they're into it. If they're not, it's okay. Mm-hmm. There's there's someone that'll be a goon toy too. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> Kazumi. Just one more time. I just how what does how would you some okay? I may be butchering um the definition of a gooner yes if i like probably the person the gooner that i did a scene with would probably kick my ass and say that's not what i fucking told you but some may say that gooning is like the practice of like edging yourself for hours like you just are in your goon cave watching 17 screens of porn for hours on end just jacking off but the way i kind of interpret it is gooning is a mindset towards porn and seeing it as kind of a neutral thing you do like not really a thing that's like oh fuck. somebody who loves porn so much that they have integrated it into their life into their lifestyle in a casual way that is so heavy that it has become <laughs> casual i i wouldn't even say heavy i would say it's it's becoming a neutral part of your life and you're exploring for example maybe different ways to jack off okay. different ways to have giant cum loads different types of fleshlights like you are actually exploring that just like that side of you that a lot of the world tells you you should be disgusted with yeah so i think we a lot of us have shitty opinions about masturbating a lot of that is just like throughout life we've been kind of told that's a shameful experience and not really a thing that we should like even like navigate it's it's like your orgasms should be with another person and i feel like yeah. the world tells us we should keep those orgasms for people sometimes it but could the, just goon- be for the me. gooners are just they're just gooning bro all right i gotta i gotta google this gooning thing. yeah yeah you could, i, I could show you up. some gooning content Okay. Yeah. We'll do that later. I could subject you to some more. <laughs> Who's Tanner? <coughs> Hi, Who Tanner. Tanner. That's a good question. That's Hello, me. Tanner. Hi, how are you guys? How's it going, man? It's going. How are you guys? Hey, are you less nervous to talk to women because I'm a gecko? Um, Maybe a little bit. You look a little less intimidating. Yeah, I look... I look like less hot maybe <laughs> Tanner uh, it says here that you're having a lot of anxiety talking that. with uh, women after having just gotten out of a four year relationship and you were unsure how to get back into the dating scene do you want to tell us more about this yeah so um, I got into a relationship when I was like 18 19 I was with her for four years um, it was a pretty good relationship we had a really good breakup it was no one was hurt. It was mutual. And this was probably like two or three months ago. And recently I've been wanting to get back out there and uh, talk to girls, get back in the dating scene. And then I also just moved and started college. So I lost a lot of my friends while I was in that relationship. Um, so I've been trying to make new friends. And lately I have just been striking out every time I 
see a girl and I want to go up to her and talk to her or anything like that, I just get overwhelmed with anxiety. And yeah, kind of my anxiety just kind of takes over and I end up not doing it. Wow. I have the ultimate Riz tip for you. I was in a relationship from 13 to 17. Um, so almost four years. Um, so I get you when you say like getting back into the market and it's like your formative years and like you're starting college, it feels like you don't understand people for a while. Um, my best advice when mm -hmm. navigating the opposite sex is realizing that despite what the internet may tell you, men and women are not much more alike or different than you actually think. Mm -hmm. And the best way to have a conversation with a woman is by being present. Like you're not gearing to have sex with me. You're not even gearing to go on a date with me. You're just gearing to get to know me. Um, and finding things that you like to do and that empower you. So let's say if you have a hobby or if you're going for a major that you're passionate about, I would make sure that you are really good at those things and you feel really good about yourself. So that way you attract people who have shared values and shared interests and hobbies. And that's the best way to find someone compatible with you. How do you feel about that, Tanner? You know, that's some that's some pretty good advice. And uh, I think I could use that. But I get in this situation and I just let my anxiety take over. Like, I can't. I feel like mm. I don't know if it's a fear of rejection. I don't know if it's um, I don't really know what it is. But Can actually, you tell a couple days ago. No, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. A couple, a couple days ago, <clears throat> I was at Zoomies, and I was picking up some stuff, and me and the girl behind the counter, we were just vibing, and I really wanted to ask for a number. I was thinking it. There was no one else there, and I was so close, and then it, I just didn't do it, and then I just walked out, and I just, I was like, fuck. Just Public missed my shot right places there. Places are I got hard. Close to taking it, but I didn't. See, that's such, that is a tough scenario, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you want to be respectful of the fact that she's working and shit. There's a plot twist. When I yeah. I, didn't, I don't sugar baby anymore, but I've been a sugar baby to a lot of guys who are really awkward. And I always got lucky with my sugar daddies being guys who were just 26, 27. Like they weren't old guys. They were always just guys with weird, insecure hangups and lots of anxiety. And they practice on me how to talk to girls. Mm. Like I and I would just unabashedly say like you're being really weird or like hey like you need. <laughs> That is not how you go down on a girl. It's good to have that feedback. Yeah, we, we had actually like great feedback loops on like, hey, like, you know, like maybe you should read this book or something. And even on my OnlyFans to this day, I feel like I help practice. I help men practice how to talk. I'm a real woman, but how, how to talk to women in their lives and realize I'm not that much different than you. You know, it's like you want to talk to me like a person when I'm in public. The best way a guy talks to me is not really by introducing themselves and saying, hey, I'm Lyle the Gecko, but kind of like just talking about the situation at hand. Like, whoa, like, this line's taking forever, huh? Crack a joke. You know, you're just segueing yourself in there, and that way it feels natural and not like you're a freaking predator. Um, you know what I mean? Um, Ted, I want to yeah, ask you yeah, something. No, you, I hear you. When you say that your anxiety takes over, what does that like look like? What, what do you mean by that? <clears throat> um I guess I really just start second guessing myself a lot. Um and I almost just get scared, I feel like. I'm just scared to ask for their number. Do like, you have I a lot of like, female friends? I don't know cuz um honestly, since I've moved up to uh where I moved to for school and everything, I honestly have like no friends right now. I would practice before looking for, I wouldn't say a mate. I would practice on working on yourself so that way you're an attractive person, both to men and women, that they want to hang out with you. And then when you practice human connections like that, okay. people of all genders will be attracted to you, both as a friend and both sexually and romantically. Okay. That's solid. Because I think it'd be hard to have a girlfriend advice. if you have no friends. Yeah, I agree. I yeah, think, and I'm uh, not even going into it somewhere. with like really looking for. A, I'm not even going into it really looking for a girlfriend. Like I am almost going into it just looking for for friends almost. 
And I just yeah. started. I just moved up here like two weeks ago. So I haven't had too many chances to go out. But, like, I've thought about going to, like, bars by myself. But, like, at the end of the day, I, like, talk myself out of it. I end up just getting high, sitting in my room, and watching Gecko on the TV. Mm. Yeah, do you have a, a Gecko addiction? Are you, you a have Gecko, gecko addiction? <laughs> I will ban you from my chat. Uh, I have a Gecko addiction. Gecko addiction. <laughs> oh, please don't, Gecko. I won't ban you from... from... <laughs> Unless if you want me to. Unless if you want me to, as a help to you. To I wouldn't say I have a chat. Gecko addiction. No, 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 no. Don't, don't ban me. Um... Oh, fuck, I was going to say something. God damn it. Oh, oh, the whole going out to bars by yourself thing. That's kind of weird. Okay, well, hold on. I think... The fact that it's kind of weird is what is compelling about it because it's like, can you put yourself in like an uncomfortable situation and be okay? I don't know if that's it's that's like a difficult thing to do to go up to to a bar by yourself and like I think to start pick talking up to people and shit it, or friends. It's hard when there's nothing I can see that can relate us to one another. You know, like I. It's easy when I'm in social situations like a school club, like if we're both in chess club or if we're both in a sport or if we're both in class and we have a common interest and a common, some type of commonality to have a conversation about before we get deeper with one another. But I, I feel like sometimes like bars and clubs can be difficult because I have no idea what we have in common. And and sometimes it's it feels like, Okay, you're just trying to have sex with me, so I just want to go away. But that's like as a woman mm. speaking speaking on that. I think your best bet in like finding friends would be like, you know, like joining a club and like, you know, becoming contributing to your community in like a fulfilling way. Okay. Okay. Tanner, is there I'll anything else you want to say? Some of the clubs that they have here. Is there anything you want to say to the people of the computer or to me or to Kazumi or to Miles Davis before we go? Who's Miles Davis? Uh, yeah, who is Miles Davis? I love you both. Um, if anyone in the chat gets the opportunity, definitely do some uh, mushrooms in your life. Dude, shrooms are the best. Take care, Tanner. I love shrooms. I love you, shroom. bye. Bye, love you. I had a shroom trip. Um, where I experienced an ego death probably two years ago, and it made me a way cooler person. And people have um, recommended ayahuasca or whatever ayahuasca ayahuasca to me, yeah, but I'm afraid that. to see more of myself. I think I'm really happy with where I am. Yeah, I think um, I'm still relatable. That's the thing. Yeah, I'm weird as fuck, and I have weird opinions, but I'm still uh -huh. relatable and grounded. I feel like if I take ayahuasca, I would cross that threshold of like, dude, you're a weird guy. What's your weirdest opinion? I think my weirdest opinion is honestly anything between consenting adults is their business. Yeah, yeah. Is why do you feel like that's a weird opinion? I think um, it's weird because people will decide for people have a hard time um, distinguishing. Hey, I wouldn't personally do that versus hey, someone is doing this thing. Yes. You know, like okay, I personally. Going back to scat porn, I personally wouldn't shit on myself on camera right. and record it. But I don't really care if you do. That's got fucking nothing to do with me if it's not hurting you. Right. It's where I, I feel like... I've been thinking about this lately. I do feel like most people operate under the idea that you should be able to do whatever you want in life until you infringe upon somebody else's ability to do whatever they want in life and where they really differ is whether or not something is uh uh you know affecting their life that somebody else is doing yeah and i feel like the internet we're inundated with everyone's opinions or right. becoming a meme which used to be my worst fear my worst fear was had, you were afraid of becoming a meme i was afraid of becoming i'm now i'm a total meme bro but like why is why were you afraid of becoming a meme okay here's the first meme that ever was of me if we're gonna talk the semantics of a meme a meme is a is a a, a cultural thing it can be a form of video or sound or or text that is shared amongst the community almost as an inside joke something that bonds people as you know a, a cultural representative of something so the first meme of myself that was ever created was me going to a pool party and um there was just a lot of guys there 
and they said something like, hey, who's next? And I raised my hand. I was like, me. And they picked me up. They threw me on the lawn and I sucked all their dicks. It was a lot of penises. How is that a meme? No, no. So I'll tell you. So um, I look up and people were recording it. And at the time, I had a normal office girl job. So I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I did not consent to being recorded to right. sucking 50 dicks. Not fucking cool. I was on OnlyFans girl. I was not doing a porn girl. Lo and behold, on Twitter, someone posts a video and says something like, these valley girls are something else. Barf emoji. It got retweeted quote retweeted hundreds of thousands of views wait wait so somebody wrote that these valley girls something else barf over over a video of you sucking 50 dicks i wouldn't say 50 but it was like a just a, like an extreme of, uh, an, a, a, yeah, a, yeah several dicks and so it became this meme first of all i'm not from the fucking valley i'm from northeast la but it was a meme yeah. And when I went to work, everyone saw it and everyone talked about it. And ev- it, was, it was like my nightmare. I did not want to be known for that. I did not want to be condensed into an easily digestible, like, one note thing. Sure. I am not from the fucking valley. Like, what? <laughs> like. So how did you overcome that? How did you then start to to build upon that momentum to be something more a than one A lot of one my people meme. on my work knew about it and had seen this video. Also, I'm not cute in this video. Um... I mean, I've been a slut my whole life. Like, people have shamed me and told me to go die in a ditch over liking sucking dick all the time. Sure. But, I mean, your mom got cream pie. We're all full grown cream pie. My mom did get cream pie. This is true. All of our moms got cream pie. I don't fucking care if you think it's gross. I didn't die. And, like, I I feel like people get offended over seeing content like that because they see themselves in it and they see that Mm. my joy in it is a reflection of like hey like this is how to like look what look at what the world's become if we're succumbing to this type of hedonism i don't want to identify with that i'm scared of of the world if it beca- if we accept behavior like this yeah. and i'm like dude i am not fucking president i am i'm not the representative <laughs> of sluts everywhere i just suck dick it's my right yeah god and it became a meme but i was really good at my job so it didn't matter so swag mm. <laughs> You feel like people see themselves in it. I wonder that too, because I really, I, I like really believe that. My, you know, my biggest meme ever was when I went on a jumper and I talked about fucking those fifty guys and how yeah. I had a body count of one million bajillion, uh-huh. and people got really mad. And at first, you'd think, why is anyone mad over a gangbang? Shouldn't everyone be happy? That means I got love for everybody. I've never sure. been mean to a guy ever. I sure. love men. And, like, I love, like, my fans and I have a Discord and I'm nice to them. I've, like, never even, sh- like, been a dickhead to a guy. Um, but I feel like people see it and they see it as a representative of, like, woman. They're like, oh, look what... If this girl is successful and happy, what does that mean for the common girl? Right. If she exists and she's successful, does that mean that all girls everywhere are going to get gangbanged? Like, my wife is going to get gangbanged? I'm like, no. Well, it's a, I, well I hate when that ha- – because there's – different people want different things. Yeah, like, you're the person you're dating doesn't have to be a gangbang queen. Like, what? Like, you, yeah. you will attract exactly what you are. And if you're right. a guy who's a one-woman type of guy, then you're going to hopefully attract a girl that's a one-guy type of girl. Right. It's like the people who want to, like, do their thing, do their thing. The people who want to yeah. get gangbang, do their and, thing. And we can all live in happiness and go to the grocery store. The internet makes the world is smaller, even though it's way bigger. There's right. pe- like, for example, like, I've been in a lot of media affiliated with Andrew Tate and his community. But honestly, in real life, I've never really met those people. I don't surround myself with those people. For entertainment purposes, the controversy and the juxtaposition is great views, and we, that's why we, we collaborate with toge- together. But that's something we consciously do because we know it creates discussion, and that's how we create a meme. Memes are crazy. Memes are, memes are propaganda. Memes are, memes are a little propagandish. Memes are propaganda. And I, um, there was a realization sometime last year when I realized that liking me wasn't cool. So I decided to, <laughs> yeah, because like, People were like, ew, I hate this Trish who doesn't shower. And I realized I had to make L- Kazumi a cool thing. And I think it's finally becoming cool. I'm a gecko. I made it. I got my blue check. Life is good. Why do you think it was not cool to like you? I was in. I was affiliated with a lot of media that um, although made me a lot of money because it was so far. Fa- like it was controversial. Co- yeah, it was controversial. It got a right. lot of views and it created... And I was outsourcing my audience to 
people that definitely didn't agree with people like me i had to i had to change my image and clean it up so that way people would kind of get where i'm coming from like i never want to let go of the fact that i'm a slutty dirty girl that is not something that i want to kill or even erase it's something that i want to show can still exist while being a multifaceted human being with a lot of opinions. Well, well I, I strongly agree with the idea that uh, t- no one part of yourself defines any other part of yourself. Yeah, like I yeah. freaking am as normal as apple pie, you know? Like I'm a pretty normal girl. I like, you know, I love Shrek. I like dress up in my gecko costume. I eat three crunchy rolls. You know, I'm Do just, you feel more connected uh, to Shrek by being green? By being right green? Now? You know, my first party I ever threw was a Shrek party. Really? We had a. Was that also a sex? No, thing? no. This was. Uh, I just liked Shrek. Oh, okay. We had like green mac and cheese to represent his ears, and we had a lot of onion <laughs> rings, and we watched Shrek's one, two, three, Puss in Boots, and Shrek the Musical, and Billie Eilish's brother Phineas was there. This was like a. This must have been like a seven-hour-long party. This was a really long party that started at eleven a.m. and was done by like eight. Damien has a facial kink and is not sure why, and he feels judged about this. Wait, Let me find a non-sex one. I kind of like the do. facial one because facial I'm not one? allowed to do facials. You're not allowed I'm to not do allowed. facial. Who like by who? My partner is against is anti facial. Okay. I am pro facial, but I have to respect his wishes. Like you and him. Don't do facials together. Or you, no, he, I'm it, not, the part of the boundaries of your relationship is that the you boundaries boundary. of our relationship is that we. I, I just don't get facials. It sucks because mm. facials were my favorite thing. It's a sad, sad tale. You want to talk to facial? I want to talk to facial guy, okay. and I want to tell him I get you, bro. I've been barred. Hi. Hello. Hello, facial king. <laughs> You just call me Facial King? Is this, what's his name? Damien? Damien. Uh, Hi. This is Kazumi. Hello. Hello. How are you um, doing? Damien, my name is Lyle. This is Kazumi. We're geckos. We're here to talk to you about whatever it is you want to talk about. What is it that you would like to talk about? <laughs> well, now that I'm on the spot, it's just like a little awkward, but... She you were on hold it, uh, for 10 whole minutes. Oh. Yeah, it was pretty fast. Faster than I anticipated. Damien, it um, says here that you have a facial kink and you're not sure why. Is that what you wanted to talk about? Yeah. It's it's strange. Like, like even when it comes to porn... In general, Why is that strange? Like I that's, feel like that's a normal that's, place that cum lands on. I think a like nut on the toes is probably a weirder place. <laughs> yes, yes, that is true. Um, so, so Damien, so tell tell us kind of in your own words what the, you know kind of your struggle with this. I feel like it's a heavy. <laughs> It's a heavy topic because I don't. I feel awkward about like I would be okay without sex. Like I could just if it were to be one thing, it would be just you know facial. I I, I can't explain it, but then I also don't understand why I enjoy it. I'm about to go ballistic. Uh, I have so much to say about facials. I'm about to go crazy, first of all. Do your thing. My partner does not... Al- I do porn, so I have sex with people. I do have a partner. He does not allow me... I'm banned from doing facials. He doesn't let me do them because he thinks they're disrespectful. Even though people pee in my butt. But facials are too far. Um, but last week, I did a scene <laughs> with a guy... And I told my, and, but he, and he gave me the call sheet and the call sheet said blowjobs rimming facial. And I was like, Hey, I don't do facials just yet, but you're Asian and he, I'm Asian and I support Asian businesses. So I'm going to make this claim to my partner and say, look, are you racist? We have to support Asian businesses and I have to have my first facial on camera by another Asian guy. 
And he was like, I don't like having sex. Because I was like, can we have sex? He was like, no. There, we're not going to have any penetrative sex. I'm just going to give you a facial. That was the scene? Yes. Okay. We're just, no, just a facial. And I was just like, no sex? He was like, no, just facial. Is this what we were talking about? Is this, is this, is this what you mean? Like, you don't want to have sex, but you just want to, like, bust a nut on a girl's face? Uh, no, I'm not saying I wouldn't. Oh, I misinterpreted like that. that. I think, can I just say, I think what he said was that he loves facials so much that, that he could live in a world where he didn't have sex and he just did facials. Is that accurate? That is pretty spot on. <laughs> okay. What, what about, uh, why? It's also tied into like I I feel like like I want to be needed like they want it like mm. the whole begging aspect mm. okay. uh, I love facials but I also feel bad while I'm while, <laughs> um, I also okay, feel why bad okay why do you though, feel bad like, I, because like it, it like uh, she brought up before it, it, like maybe they feel like they're being degraded and like <sighs> I mean always ask if you can give someone a facial because what if I'm going to meet my mom right after you know it's fucked up if, I, if I'm not facial ready <laughs> same with pee don't pee on a girl unless she asks you to pee on her I think his, pro- I think his <laughs> problem is that like you know he, he, okay, so he's in a situation where like well, like he has this desire maybe it's like a you know a fantasy of his that um a girl is like on her knees like with her tongue out begging for his cum and the Slipper. fact that he has that pant that fantasy is uh um bothering him because he feels as though it's a degrading fantasy. What's your take on that? There are I... way more degrading fantasies than one of the most popular <laughs> porn search searches ever. But this reminds me of when I told you that story when you were at sure. my house, Lyle, about how I wanted a bukkake by these guys. But they came so late. It was three guys. They came late as fuck <laughs> yeah, to my so. house to my, or wherever. And I was just like, I'm not in the mood to have sex with you guys, but I want you guys to just paint me with cum. And they were like, are you going to... F- fuck us or suck our dicks i was like no you loser you're late so you're just gonna jack off and just like just <laughs> cover me with nut is and and then they awkwardly all like bukkakied me and they didn't make eye contact with each other that much and it was weird and it took them too long is this what, the, what you're talking about is this am so, I wait, perfect, okay, can i am just, i the perfect woman just, for you <laughs> it just i want to say so so i think what uh, the, the struggle mean, is is <laughs> what, did, what did you say? <laughs> I said it's sounding pretty close, like the perfect woman. But yeah, I might be the quite. perfect woman. <laughs> so I, I think the the issue here is he has this sexual fantasy that he feels insecure about and not sure if it's like you know ethical. Just in his own mind, I know you said that there are things that are you've experienced that are way worse, mm-hmm. but just for him, how he reconciles and deals with that and navigates that desire i feel like so many girls like to get facial i think you can walk outside and say who wants a facial i don't know and if you maybe can do that five girls could be like oh my god <laughs> thank you damien give me your hot load i think it'll be easy for no, you i don't no. know if you're hot but if you're damien's a hot name yeah that's a hot guy name so i can't really imagine you as an ugly guy i think facials are a thing that as long as you ask are a thing that you can happily indulge in as long as you want <laughs> how do you how do you what what are your thoughts damien oh i mean it, it did make me feel a little bit better but i don't know it's just uh it's here and there <laughs> yeah uh, i mean you you know i've had friends that are into bdsm and they have like little I wouldn't say like slaves, but little submissives and their purpose is just one thing. Like I have a, I used to have a little, uh, like 
and he would call himself a simp and he would just come and clean my house you could have a little little girl simp for damien that just comes in and is like a little cum landing pad and and that's totally ethical as long as she's like <laughs> dtf down to facial <laughs> Was that on the spot? Was that on the spot? Was yeah, that spot. was on the spot. Right. <laughs> the, 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 I didn't rehearse this. I didn't know you'd I come think, in. I think you've you've opened up a, a whole new world of possibility for our friend Damien here. Yeah. He, Damien, is there anything else you want to say to other people of the computer or to me or to Kazumi or to Chucky from Rugrats? <laughs> no, uh, this, was, uh, this was my first time calling and I've been watching you for every while. You are amazing. I still want to believe man. that you're from Rhode Island. Are you? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> if you were in no, our city, a, I would let you give me a facial. Day. It'd be funny. Um, but you'd have to battle you your own demons. In? No. <laughs> 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 but if you coincidentally were in the city of Los Angeles, then yeah, I would I would facial it out. I don't know if I need a facial <sighs> from specifically Damien that hard. I think like like Lyle and so like you're seven saying, guys could give me a facial right now. So you're saying if he so you're saying if he pays his own way. Is your cum green? Because you're a gecko. Because you're green. So you're saying if he pays his own way <laughs> and gets to Los Angeles. He could give you a fish. I think my partner would have to say yes because that's a great <laughs> YouTube video. Like I would have to say this guy flew out. He has an extreme facial kink. I've always had a facial kink and it's my right. It's my face. What? And I can have nut on there if I want to. It's my life. But I might not suck your dick. You just kind of have to jerk it. Deal or no deal? It's fine as long as you give me the motivation. Um, thank you, Damien. I had to share that facial story. And you know, we're glad you did, Kazumi. Thank you, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Roxy. Hey. Hi. How you doing, Roxy? Hello. I am doing um, fantastic. How are you guys? It sounds like you guys have an HR issue at your hands. Can you explain it to us? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, um, myself and my best friend Jade, we are both baristas, um, and at our coffee shop, we've worked there for like a year or so now, um, a little bit longer than our general manager has been, uh, I guess, yeah, general manager. Um, thing is, is that recently with all of the shifts going around like moving around to make spot for our manager um there has also been a lot of fallout i guess between the co-workers because they're not exactly happy with our new manager so our manager is um i guess getting into her feelings a little bit and starting rumors uh amongst the baristas there about different people and one of those rumors just happens to be about myself and my best friend who works there is she lying like like it's like an unabashed lie or has there been things where it looks like you guys are in a relationship so she's just thinks you guys are okay so basically what had happened um was that we were at my friend Jade's uh, birthday party. Um, she was there with her boyfriend, Eric, um, and Eric had brought one of his buddies uh, along with him that was from out of the city. Um, he, this particular buddy of Jade's boyfriend, got uh, very drunk and ended up making Jade cry. And I, like, as her best friend, I was a little drunk too, so I just kind of stayed with her. It was a birthday party that was held by a good majority of our coworkers, um, with our manager being a big, like, leader of this party, like, the reason why it was made. So she kind of oversaw, like, everything that was happening, how Jade and her boyfriend had kind of separated while he was going to take care of his 
Buddy and then like me being with Jade the whole night. And she started that rumor like directly after that party, basically saying that me and Jade had have been in this secret relationship. Did, did um, you and Jade um, get I'm naked sorry if I... and and have sex, or or did Girl, you just comfort her like no. a real human being? <laughs> I um, literally just comforted her like a real human being. I mean, she was crying, she was upset. Um, <laughs> you know, I was like, like I'm touchy feely with my with my babies. You know, like I'll put my arm over her, I'll put a little kiss on the forehead. Like it's nothing crazy, but my our manager like saw that and instantly was like nah your manager is a weirdo and i hope that she like learns to find friendship in the common things in the small things Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. are you um mm, now uh, the fact that your manager is spreading like the the fact that my manager is even getting like what yeah like the fact that they're even getting this, this deep into your personal life i mean is this like is this a small coffee shop or we or are we is this Starbucks a sexy in? coffee shop or well okay so this is it's they try to pride themselves on being like the cool hip coffee shop it's no better than starbucks like it really isn't but okay. it's but a like you can't thing. go and get there like maybe you know there's no hr or anything like that no, so our HR is literally just one woman and she, you know, doesn't look into any complaints that have been filed regardless. If they're even filed, I mean, shit, it's all word of mouth. I mean, I would just talk to your boss initially and be like, bitch, shut the hell up. Then it doesn't seem like there's any consequences for people thinking that you're in a lesbian relationship with Jade at all. It seems like one of those like harmless rumors, like a, a rumor that I wouldn't appreciate as if everyone like was telling everyone else that I had herpes or something. That is an HR issue well, to me. But I think like yeah. me being in a cute relationship with my coworker is annoying, but I would just tell her to mm-hmm. stop. And then people, it's not even a controversial, insane rumor. Like you don't have AIDS. That would be controversial. That would be controversial. I mean, I guess, like, the way that I felt it kind of crossed the line was whenever Jade's boyfriend moved away to be with his grandparents. Um, Whenever he, he, because he, uh, Jade has been working there for a while, and uh, Eric has already been introduced to, like, the entire coworker group. So whenever he moved out of the city, um it kind of happened around the same time as jade's birthday it was maybe like a month or two later um and so i guess our manager kind of started spreading it like oh well eric moved out of the city because he found out that jade and roxy were together and that became something that you know we just talking about she was like i think no i'm kidding i'm not texting my mom i'm texting a girl who just texted me saying hey i'm watching you in a gecko costume and i was like i just texted back and said yeah that's me so roxy (laughs) um what kind of action if any are you planning on taking on this oh okay well yeah, part of the reason I guess I called was just because um, Jade is actually going to be quitting um, the coffee shop in a couple of weeks. And she wants to, I guess, kind of inquire if she should bring it up at all to our manager and kind of say, like, hey, the reason why people are quitting yeah. and they don't trust you is because you are spreading rumors like X or like well, Y. Can I like just he, bef- you know? Let me ask you this, Roxy. Like, uh, bringing this up to him, is it like... Is it worth it to you to do that? Um, I mean, to me, I I've already left, so I oh fuck mean, it. I oh. quit a couple weeks ago myself. So I like I don't mind. I guess I'm just more worried about Jade and like how she's ending things because she has been there a considerable amount of time longer than I have, and I know that her heart is a little bit more invested in it. So. 
I mean, if I it's know. an issue that you guys feel like you have to lead the charge of, then by all means, I guess, go for it. I initially thought that you guys worked in those, like, sexy Vietnamese coffee shop baristas, so my, ima- like, like the way I was visualizing this was completely different. Oh. Do you know what I'm talking about? What a sexy I mean, Vietnamese coffee shop? I wish, you know those Orange girl, County? I would have made this story better. I would have been like, were you guys naked? No, you know those like co- those Vietnamese coffee shops in Orange County? No, no, what is that? It's like those coffee shops where it's only, it's coffee, but all the waitresses are, are like Asian women and they're completely naked. I have never heard of that I... before. I'll bring you to one right after this. Okay, but cool. I could see how there might be a miscommunication in relationships there. Because sometimes you make out with your with your uh, coworkers, right? Um, and sometimes you're naked, right? Sure. Um, but you're serving smoothies and and sandwiches like right. everyone else, right? Right. And this is one of the sort of a more traditional clothed. Yeah, this is seems like a normal regular place, normal normal establishment. Yeah. But I like to imagine you naked. It, it, it was helping me um, kind of get into it more. Roxy, how do you feel like this conversation was for you? Do you feel like um, there's any other part of this that you want to want to talk about, or do you feel like you learned anything from talking about this? No, I think it was just nice to get it off my chest, but I am good. Thank you for sharing, Roxy. Roxy, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? No, thank you. Good night, Roxy. Smoochy. She was nice. She was cutie. Hey, <laughs> Kenny, how you doing, man? Kenny, um, my name is Lyle. I'm a gecko. I'm here with Kazumi. She's a gecko, too, and we're here to talk to people about stuff. What kind of stuff would you like to talk about? Well, I am a frequent watcher of your stream. I enjoy uh, just geckos in general. Anyways... What I would like to talk about is, you know what? There's no shame in trying to uh, find it somebody who's into something you are into, um, despite your past. Uh, it says here that you used to have sex with people's wives, and then they would film it. Hell yeah. What is that like? Well... Um, technically, that's called what I said, a Craigslist bull. So I would advertise pictures of my dick and get um, requests for people to uh, have sex with their wives. Okay. So popular. Were you getting paid for this or was this just those things for sport? Honestly, I gladly like that you bring that up um it was half sport half i was lonely Mm. hell yeah i mean honestly it sounds fun was it a good cure for your loneliness um no because like honestly i i may be speaking into the wind here but when i wake up after a exhausting night of sexual activity and honestly you don't fall asleep if it's not good. Let's be real here. Uh, I really like making breakfast. My penis is seven inches. Thank you. Um, okay, so you make breakfast? That's like... Dude, it's... I know I, I I said I'm speaking in the wind here. It's like cuddling, waking up next to somebody, and like you can fucking talk about Pokemon and stuff. Mm. So it didn't cure your loneliness because mm. it didn't. It, it kind of ended just at the sex and nothing really around the sex that happened. It looks like you need a wife that someone else will have sex with. Ooh. What? What if? What if you had a wife and she just had sex with dudes off Craigslist? But you can make her breakfast. And I would actually be super pissed because. Um, my dick is the one who gives orgasms, not anybody else. So just to clarify that. Um, well, what if she just wants more <laughs> orgasms? What if there's a an eight-inch guy who knows how to make her squirt upside down? I, I feel like she has the right 
Well, too that long. eight inch guy can talk to another lady that is not my girlfriend. Wow. To be honest. <laughs> this is an interesting <laughs> twist. <laughs> so you are okay with fucking other people's wives, but you wouldn't want someone to fuck your hypothetical wife. Used to be because I was seeking for a relationship and now I do have a good girlfriend and everything's all poly. We've talked about this. She used to do stuff in the past too. I don't judge her. She doesn't judge me. It's fun. Let's can just say you, that. Can I ask you a question? What is your feelings towards the guys who are calling upon you to cuck to their, be a bull. To cuck them. To be a bull. To cuck them. How do you feel about them? I, dude, I was just really horny, so I didn't even think about them. It was just like, you know, I'm on Craigslist. People want to have sex with me. Hell yeah. Uh, as far as question? the guy's perspective, it was kind of exhilarating the fact that he wanted to film me having sex with his wife. That felt good. If you were seeking, like, a person to wake up next to you and cuddling, why were you seeking wives? You could have just posted your penis and said, hey, single ladies, anyone want my seven-incher? Was it, was mm -hmm. it the fact that they I, had a I've husband? I've heard people say that that's a highly effective way of doing it. Yeah? Like, you, did, did they have to be married? Well, like I said, I was lonely and just kind of... Seeking human contact. Like I said, yeah. right now I have a girlfriend whom, um, you know, we're poly, or not poly, the opposite. Fuck. Monog. Uh, but yes, I've definitely lived, yeah, monogamous. We, both of us have lived that life and shit. It feels good to wake up next to somebody and be like, you know what? I'm going to make you the best fucking eggs ever. And, like, you just, like, fuck their brains out the night beforehand. That's a good feeling. And you couldn't do that with wives? I mean, when I get married, I'll come over and you can fuck me and then you can also make me eggs. And then I could leave. Like, it was it the egg part? Or the married part? Or the, the cuddling in the morning part? I mean, it's kind of all of the four. You know, it, it's just that human interaction that, like, somebody gets you. Like, I, I, I hate to be sentimental, but, like, y you know, like, it's the whole namaste thing. You know, you, um, you get, you, you've been talking so, on so, the street so listen, for a listen. while. You got a partner. You got somebody who gets you. Kenny, are you feeling good about where you're at in life right now? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Uh, relationship-wise, yes. Financially, Yay. no. But that's a whole nother topic. Wow. What, what if you made... I feel like that's a whole... I. You know how oh, there's... um. That could be a porn website. Like, hey, I'm Kenny, and guys on Craigslist have me go to their house and fuck their wives. Yeah. I'm into it. Like, they film... Because I'm wondering, so they filmed of you that. having I've sex with their that. wives. Do you not... Is is some part of that not? All, do you have stake in that intellectual property? Can you? Yeah, sell it. I mean, yes, but I would rather save that sexual energy for one person, and also, like, I can write poems and stuff. So, <laughs> okay, well, poetry I'm, can be lucrative. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad that you're happy, and you know, you found someone who gets you. Personally, like, I've done, I've done it all. I've cucked. I've been cucked, and I've been the cuck queen, which is the bull girl, the girl bull. And I bet it felt good. It, it, it felt, felt good in the moment. I, it felt I, good I, I'm, before I'm not, and I'm not after. trying to judge anybody here. I'm just here for, like, conversation as somebody who's been there, done that. Yeah, it's cool that you... Um, so does your partner also have experience in the cuck world? Well... Okay, hold up. I need to go outside because she's sleeping. This is a little bit personal. Oh. Um, she <laughs> this is for the stream. <laughs> tried that stuff, and the guy didn't pay her, so she gave up. 
Oh. Mm. Where she was the girl bull or the girl cuck or the girl girl? <laughs> she was just a girl. Uh, versus some guy who said, I will give you money for something. And oh. then she's just like, what the fuck? You're just leaving. There's no money. Mm -hmm. I'm now confused. I'm calling my mom. She called her mom? I'm glad she has a safe relationship with her mom where she can tell her something crazy like that. Yeah, anyways. Uh, five, ten years, we're here. Five, ten years? Lots of oh, therapy, cute. lots of talking. <clears throat> Hell yeah. It sounds like you're happy. So I'm happy. Yes. It, and um, I was mainly calling, like, on your side, like, you know, it's okay to do what you do. Do what you want. Like, at the end of the day, you know what makes you happy. I agree with that sentiment. Th thanks, Kenny. Kenny, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? I've honestly just been watching chat while I've been in phone queue, and they're kind of wild, so... I, I, I could just say one thing, but then somebody else will disagree with it. That's just life. Yeah, that's, that's life. <laughs> People disagree. What, if you can say it very fast, what's the thing? Just be happy with yourself. If you actually have any regrets on your deathbed, you fucked up. I thought he was going to say a slur. I thought so. I thought he was going to scream the <laughs> N-word. <laughs> I thought he was going to say, and I was going to be like, whoa. <laughs> you know, that's only, it really has, in the history that I've been doing the show, I mean, we have call screeners now, but I used to not. In the history of doing the show, that's only happened like a small handful of times. Yeah, and so so far people have been quite respectful. If I, when have. I used to do e-dates, oh my God. Like the when guys, did you do e-dates? I used to do e-dates like kind of like mm, sometime last year when that was like a more trendy thing to do. Like I did it with Aiden Ross and Heel Mike and Neon Sniper Panda. And the guys I would get would sometimes be so bizarre. Do you, how are you feeling? One more, two more? Mm, let's do one more. Let's do one more? Let's okay. do one more goody one. Hello? Oh my God, is it me? Yes, yes it's you. It's you. Hi, it's Kazumi. Hello? Oh my God, sorry guys. I literally went to the bathroom. Hi, nice to meet you guys. Pee pee party. <laughs> Oh my god, I literally had like a hunch. I was like, oh my god, I hope they don't call me when I'm in the bathroom. When yeah, it's pee pee time, it's pee pee time. Guys? Hi, I'm Kiara. Hi. <laughs> so we met before? Um, yeah, we met at AVN. I met both of you actually. I took a picture with both of you. <gasps> Oh, oh, I don't know great. what it is. Uh, Kiara, um, it says here that uh, uh, you're looking to grow your personal career as a porn actress. Is that right? I am, yeah. Are you? Are we talking specifically mainstream porn or OnlyFans? Um, mainstream. So I'm actually assigned uh, talent already, um, but I just want to grow as my like as my brand and stuff. Can I ask why you saw you want to do mainstream sports specifically over OnlyFans? Because OnlyFans would make you a lot more money. I've always wondered that too. It does. Um, it's not that I would not, I'd want to do that more. Um, so much as I really haven't had as much luck on OnlyFans. I've been doing OnlyFans since like 2019, and I guess I just maybe haven't known how to market myself and stuff. So I thought maybe platform and then having them like my fans go over to only fans and fansly and the other platforms might be like a smarter move yeah okay can i ask you a question what made what made you first want to get into porn and what makes you continue to want to do porn uh so i've kind of always been like an exhibitionist and a voyeur um ever since i was like probably uh not legally allowed to be filming myself i was filming myself and my friends and stuff so i just thought it'd be cool to make money off of it especially um you know how popular it is nowadays i've done every other career under the sun that i was able to do and i just didn't give me as much passion or enjoyment as this does i really thoroughly enjoy it 
Okay. Well, I think a, what a lot of people do mainstream porn for nowadays is for the exact same reason as you, which is to get their name out there because their socials have, or their OnlyFans has not been profitable. As we know, when you get into mainstream porn, you get paid one time for per scene, whatever your rate is. And hopefully that scene or many scenes you do, if you're contracted or something like that, makes you a lot of money. And then let's say your OnlyFans has the capability to kind of convert that audience into loyal, um, loyal fans. So I understand what you mean because I have mm -hmm. delved into mainstream a little. Obviously, I signed with Vixen. And the main reason for that was I just wanted to make sure that there was amazing commercials of what I was capable of. So that way, when you subscribe to my yeah. OnlyFans, like you knew I'm a real slut. I'm going to get into it. So what I would say, if you're going to get into mainstream mm -hmm. porn, I had the resources where I went over to Adriana Chechik's house. I spent a day with her asking her how to have good sex. And I talked to Tiana Trump. She taught me how to suck dick. I shot a lot of OnlyFans scenes myself. And I really watched myself have sex and saw how I need to open up to the camera, how I need to suck dick. Like, if you actually want to become a great performer. You, you like, why you actually watch is, back your porn and, and you're like, I, I should be doing that how, differently. I, I should be say doing. I watch a lot of porn, yeah, especially good today. porn. Huh. Because um, I want to know yeah, what. Because You're, it's like a craft. Yeah, many people make porn. Not everyone's going to make yeah, me subscribe to an OnlyFans. What looks good on camera? Because what feels good doesn't always. Yeah, what what looks good doesn't always is what always feels good. You kind of have to you have to make yeah. it look good on camera. It really is acting. So yeah, because yeah, so, can I see real quick? These... Like, I most wanted to know like. Oh no! Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry, you cut out. Well, okay. So real quick, I just wanted to ask you because oh, um, I'm just very ask curious. More of the resources. This is like a four-way stop sign. Because uh, I'm curious, what do these um, what what do these deals look like? It's like you get paid one time. You don't get like royalties or anything. Is that most? No, of the you deals? don't. With porn, yeah. or at least the way it's been for me so far, I'm contracted and I'm exclusive, so I get paid a higher rate. I don't have an agent. I don't know if you have an agent, but I don't have an agent or a management company because I just like to cut the middleman. That means yeah. life is just generally a little bit more stressful for me because I have to actually answer the phone directly and handle things and coordinate yeah. things. And obvious. Um, but yeah, with porn, you get paid one time versus with OnlyFans, people... As long as I own that intellectual property, I will profit off that as long as it's mine. Now, my thing is, yeah, don't, I saw the same you're going to get into mainstream years, porn. Like... And even if you are a great performer, none of that is going to matter if your OnlyFans is not built to be able to sustain the incoming subscribers that come from them. So let's say you are a fucking Adriana Chechik part t times two. That's great. But your OnlyFans, I would say, I always advise people the best way you can make money on OnlyFans is number one, have a low acquisition cost. So my page is $3. It's easy to decide to just join in. Mm -hmm. I, I was trying to subscribe to a girl yesterday who had big ass titties. I was watching her on Twitter. I love big natural breasts. I went to her OnlyFans page. It was 20 fucking dollars. It's a lot. And yeah. I knew she wasn't even doing porn. I just wanted to see <laughs> nipples, bro. So I left. You need to have a low acquisition cost. Yeah. And then... It's like more than Netflix. Yeah, what the fuck? So, I mean, I'm sure it's worth it if I really, really wanted to yeah. see her boobs. But I don't want to see her boobs that much. It's $3, free, whatever it is to get yeah. them in the building. Once they're in the, in the building, make sure you have content on your OnlyFans that you, can, you can't sell your mainstream scenes. Make sure you have content on your OnlyFans, whether it's bikini pictures, topless pictures, sexting, actual scenes with your boyfriend or whatever. Make sure it's good. Make sure it's good, it's consistent, it's frequent, yeah, and you I are creating like a customer experience. Videos, I don't even know what to do with it. Yes. May I, if you subscribe to Girls OnlyFans and get inspired by them, subscribe to mine, subscribe to people like Riley Reed, Blunder the Plug, and see how they're making a fuck ton of money. Mm -hmm. Because it has nothing to do with how you look, how good you fuck, how hardcore you are, and how it has everything to do with your marketing and the way you are able to create a fan base. Um, but if you're doing mainstream exactly. porn, you have to be a good performer if you actually want that to become OnlyFans money. Otherwise, you're just showing up for work, getting paid once, yeah. and then you leave and everyone forgets. Swag. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I come from like a kind of 
kind of like an acting background as well. Like I was a theater kid and shit. So like I kind of have that advantage as well. But yeah, um, are there any like references? Because I don't want to like just ask questions. But like, is there anywhere or like books or anything that you thought were helpful like in your career? Like even not in the sex industry, but like to build your business and stuff? Um, I would just really think about what would make you stand out. Maybe find a specific niche. Obviously, I have a look. And I stand for something. I have a mission statement. It's clear. I have a personality. It's clear. Doing safer work things like getting on Lyle Gecko podcasts. I'm reaching his audience right now who probably don't have never even heard of me. So doing things like TikTok, YouTube, Twitch streams that have nothing to do with porn. Honestly, will probably give you a better chance of get making more money than doing a scene and getting paid one time. You Unless you're a, you try to book about this stuff, Kazumi. Yeah, yeah maybe I should. Exactly what yeah, well, you ever thought about I, doing co- in, coaching? I yeah, I. Slut. Sorry, what'd you say? I said I'm known as pasta slut. So like, I already got like a brand deal. Pasta like, slut. Uh, Wait a minute, I remember you, pasta, pasta, pasta slut. And are yeah, you pasta slut? I, was freaking I do out. remember. Oh pa- I do remember you, pasta slut. Yeah. Some, I guess somebody said that their name was pasta slut. I'm like, that's a, that's an interesting name. Did you have a Telegram group chat? You're like, that's a weird ass name. Um, did, name did you have did you have a Telegram oh, yeah, group chat? Oh, okay. I've shot with that guy. No, I've never had my own though. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, if you wanted me to get into real specifics, then message me on on instagram kazumi's world and i'll i'll drop some sauce just to be silly <laughs> go, go check out pasta slut okay, thank you yeah so much. i appreciate it uh claire is there anything else the you want to say to the people at the computer before we go um no but let's rule the world and we love them and you shouldn't be ashamed of anything in your life and do what you love Beautiful. <laughs> Woohoo! thank you pasta slut thank, thank you, pasta you guys slut. have a good night i love pasta thank you how you feeling, Kazooms? We did it. We did. We did it. We we gecked. We we came. We conquered. We saw. We gecked. Uh, Kazumi, how do you feel about this evening? How? What are your any final thoughts? Any final life lessons? Any final? You know, what's what do you what do you make of? of it was fun. It was fun. I, I like. People are the best books. People are the best. I, books. I love talking to just regular people. And finding out they are just so strange. They are. They're, I'm just like, wow, you're just a guy. Yeah. Everyone's just a guy. That's yeah. what I've learned from talking to all kinds of people. Everyone's I'm, just some person. I'm just a guy. I know I've made it because there are there's like a persistent rumor on the internet right now that yeah. I am trans. Like that Is I'm that a guy, how you know that you've That I'm a boy. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, there's nothing wrong with it if I was. Uh-huh. But I would tell you guys because that would be on brand of me to tell you guys. But I'm not. Okay. But that's how I knew I made it. Like when Lady Gaga, when everyone said that she had a penis. Right. Um, even though you could totally Google my vagina. I guess that's, that is a weird thing to start a rumor about what kind of genitals you have when it's somebody really, can very easily look up. I guess I could be fully, fully surged up, I guess. But like, I remember like, so, like someone or said. Or you had like a reversible. Yeah. Like someone was said something like, she keeps saying like, she's a silly little guy. Is anyone else hearing that? She's a guy, and I'm like, I think guy is like all the. I, to me, those ter- those terms have I felt said, very gender neutral. I like said, I say man a lot. If to, I say hey bro, then, right? You know, I like was at Cool Kicks, and I did a YouTube video, and they I was a size six in boys, and people were like, see, proof, and I was like, I mean, huh. it's just shoes. I don't like shoes are not really gendered, actually. We learned people are the best books. Um, we learned what else did we learn? Did we learn anything? We learned that you should learn to... uh, You don't have to destroy things you don't understand. You don't have to destroy things you don't understand. I like that. People are the best books. You don't have to destroy things you don't understand. We learned that Kazumi loves Lyle. Oh, thank you, Kazumi. And you're going to go to my birthday party. I'm excited. And you're going to bring your hot boss. Sure. My manager, Chase. I love him. I'll bring him. And I'm going to cuck you. Well, thanks for joining, Kazumi. I appreciate it. Anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? I love you. My OF is Kazumi's World. I'm giving free nudes to the vaccinated. I'm saving the world (laughs) one titty at a time. Although, if you only have one shot, it's one breast. That's a fair trade. Just simple one titty. That's a fair trade. If you do the whole thing, I'm saying spread eagle, ballistic, pussy spreader. Thanks for coming on, Kazumi. 